I'm going to get jump right into this because I got a word for y'all. I got a word for you. Amen. Uh, if I had a title, uh, I would title this sermon, Walking with a Limp. Everybody say, Walking with a Limp. Uh, and the rest of you say, Walking with a Limp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you know, and this, I wrote this in my personal notes during my study time, because this is the one thing when I was first, before I truly surrendered to God. Now, I was playing church there for a little bit. I know y'all don't. But I was playing church there. But when I, be, before I truly surrendered to God, I did not understand how people could say, I know Jesus. I've been born again. I've been, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven, but be mean as a Mississippi squirrel. I'm talking where the squirrel goes berserk. I'm talking about, man, some of the meanest people I, I know was Christians. Or they said they were Christians. But I didn't understand that. But I, I started thinking, because I, I preached to myself on Fridays. How many of you know that when you truly encounter God, you walk away different? You, you'll never, watch, you'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Never, no way. Look, there's, y'all lean in. There's no way you can say, I have encountered God and remain the same. No way. No way. No way. I don't care who your daddy, who your mama, who your pappy, who your granny is. Because here's the deal. I know who Jesus is. He'll change you. He'll change your life. There'll be evidence, watch, that you have been with God. There'll be evidence that you have been with God. Y'all remember Moses in the Bible. Everybody say Moses. Everybody say Moses. Y'all remember Moses. When he come down off the mountain, he, he wasn't the same. Why? He encountered Jesus. The Bible says. Everybody say the Bible says. Because it really don't matter what B-Raf says. The Bible says that when Moses came down from the mountain after being in the presence of God, there was something different about him. He had a, the Bible called it a Shekinah glory. Everybody say Shekinah glory. You didn't speak in tongues. You're close, but you didn't speak in tongues yet. You will eventually. But it was a Shekinah glory. There was a glow around his life. There was something different about Moses. Even the people, Jimmy, I love this. Even the people who encountered Moses after he had been in the presence of God, they changed. So here's what I'm saying. I'm saying if you truly get in the presence of God, there'll be a glow about your life. There'll be something different about your life. You won't look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world. There'll be a glow. There'll be something different about your life. Even the lost people will say, they've been in the presence of God. They've been in the presence of God. Y'all remember in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. The people took note. They literally took note that Peter and John had been in the presence of God. Had been in the presence of God. And these were just, the Bible says, they were ordinary men. Well, Brian, I don't have no education. You're ordinary. You're just like me. We're just ordinary people. But we serve an extraordinary God. Amen. And once ordinary people get in an extraordinary situation, they leave differently. They leave differently. They leave differently. Y'all remember, remember in the Bible also, Peter got changed. He was changed. So all I can say is this today. If you truly encounter God, everybody here today, watch. We have an opportunity to leave changed. What about that? We have an opportunity to leave chains. And watch this. I refuse, as your pastor, to be just ordinary old preacher. We got too many of those. I refuse, as long as I'm in this pulpit, us just to be an ordinary little standard church, Southern Baptist church sitting on the side of the highway. I refuse that. Because you mean to tell me we can come into the presence of God and stay mad. Stay angry. There's no way. So that means this. Y'all ready? Look at your neighbor and say, congratulations. And welcome to church. Yeah, welcome to church. Welcome to being in the presence of God. Welcome being the church. Now, I want y'all to do one more thing before I preach this because this, that, that was just my intro. Y'all, we, we're good today. We're good today. Go ahead and look at your neighbor give him a high five. Go and give him a high five and ask him this. Why do you walk with a limp? Come on, everybody. What did y'all do last night? Good God. Yeah, why, why, why do you walk with a limp? Why do you walk differently? Why do you walk differently? So Genesis chapter 32, I'm ready to preach. Y'all ready to listen? Somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I, 
Here's what, here's what used to bother me as a pastor. I'd look out in the church and I would see, I would see nothing but empty seats. Y'all know what I see today? I see people. I don't pay attention to the empty seats. I pay attention to the people who are here, hungry for God, that wants to make a difference in their life. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being at church today. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, thank you for being here today. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. And Facebook fam, look at me. Look, look, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but look at me. Facebook was good for a temporary time. We're getting ready to shut that bad boy off. Either, either we're going to drive them back into church. You say, well, Brian, what about other people? Listen, we'll reach them. But here's the deal. Facebook will make you lazy. Facebook will get you comfortable sitting in a, at home with a cup of coffee and a bowl of Fruit Loops in your hand. And next thing you know, you're lazy. You don't come to church. Y'all, y'all know I'm pretty. Y'all just scared to say it. But when you're under the anointing of God, you'll speak truth. I'm just telling y'all, listen, Facebook, you need, you need to get back in church. We need to get back in church. Come on, somebody. We need to get back in church. We need this right here. And it's different. On, I've been there. It's different sitting at home than being in church. When you, you can't tell. I got to feel the Holy. Let me preach just a little bit. That didn't feel. Whoo. You mean to tell me last Sunday we had eight salvations and four baptisms. They felt that at home. There's, there's. Y'all just missed the praise break right there. Eight salvations. Four baptisms. Don't, don't. No, no. Eight salvations. Four baptisms. God is on the move. God's on the move in Jesus' name. Somebody give him a crazy praise. That's right. That's right. Now listen, we love Facebook family, but there comes a time. There comes a time you come back to church. Now, since I made all of y'all mad, maybe not y'all. Let me go ahead and make the rest of you mad. Genesis chapter 32. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what y'all feel. I'm ready to preach this. Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 through 31. I got a little reading, but I got to set this up. Walking with a limp. What, look at your neighbor and say one more time, why do you walk with a limp? The Bible says, Genesis 32, verse 22 through 31. The same night he arose and took his two wives. He does say two wives. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I got to tell y'all something. I'm so thankful. That in the New Testament, God says, one wife at a time. Somebody give God praise. But you, some of y'all are so stinking religious. Listen, I'm telling you, King Solomon had 700 wives and 300 cockmen. Everybody say, he cray cray. He cray cray. I can't handle one Dana. And she can't handle one P-Ralph. I'm so thankful. See, we complicate the Bible. God can't use you if you've been divorced. So what, why did he use King Solomon with 700 wives and concubines? I'm just saying. He had two wives and he brought both of them with him. Something going to happen. <laughs> Something going to happen up in his story. His two female and his two female servants. Good God. Oh, here's what happened. And his 11 children. Y'all, 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 y'all will get this. Y'all go home and rewind this tape. Y'all just missed the pray. Two wives, 11 children. Oh, God. He finally crossed the ford, not Greg Ford. He finally crossed the ford of Jabok. He took them and sent them across the stream. And he, he sent, look, Drew, he sent them away. <laughs> this is funny. See, this is the way I read my Bible. Y'all sitting there looking at me like, oh, God. This is the way I got to read my Bible. Because it makes sense to me. Nowhere in this Bible to say, he took thou two wives. He sent one across that stream. He don't say that. Well, and everything else that he had, he, he sent it all with him. <laughs> he sent it all with him. And Jacob was, he was finally left alone. So, hey, yeah. This is a marriage series right here. I didn't even realize this. This is so good. And the man wrestled. Where am I at? Okay. And the man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket. And Jacob's hip, listen to this, was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go. 
For the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go. Listen to this. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I will not let you go until you bless me. Until you bless me. And I speak that over every person here today. Don't you let go of the presence of God till he blesses you. Even if he throws your hip out of socket. Watch this. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, watch this. Why did, where did this come from? Okay, what's your name? Yeah, and he said, my name's Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have, watch, prevailed. Verse 29, then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. This is the only time in the Bible where I found that this, they were having a conversation like this. What's your name? But he said, why is it you ask my name? And there he blessed him. Watch this. So Jacob called the name of the place Penel. He's saying, for I have what? Seen God face to face. I have seen God face to face. And yet my life has been delivered. I love that. Because see, when you see God, you will be delivered. When you see God, you'll be healed. When you see God, I'm telling you things will happen in the supernatural that you didn't think could happen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 31, the sun rose up on the place they called Penua and, and limping, be, watch, limping because of his what? Because of his hip. Jacob was wrestling. Some say an angel, some say God. But I know this, the Bible says he's seen God face to face. Face to face. Why was Jacob wrestling with God? Because of his life. Listen to me very carefully. I want, I, want to, I want to dig deep in here just for a moment. Because of God's will and God's plan for his life. God's will and God's plan for his life. The same way with me and you. Why do we wrestle with God? But our lives. God's will. God has called some of y'all to be in the ministry. God's called some of you to be on the worship team. God's called some of you to work at a certain place. And you know what we do? Most of the time we wrestle, we wrestle, we wrestle with God. Well, I want you to think about this. Jacob's biggest battle. Think about this. His biggest battle in life. I love this. Ended up being his biggest blessing in life. His biggest battle ended up being his biggest blessing. I'm going to say it again. Your biggest battle. Let's make it personal. Your biggest battles in life. If you'll pay attention to God and working through Jesus, working through the Holy Spirit. Some of your biggest battles will be your biggest blessings. Sometimes God's got to take you to the valley. Sometimes God's got to take you to the Holy God woodshed. Sometimes God's got to dismiss people. Sometimes God, watch this. Sometimes God will make you lose your job. Sometimes. It's so true. But instead of accepting what God has for our lives, we wrestle and 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 we wrestle. Watch this, man. I'm telling y'all, listen, when we finally realize that there is purpose behind the pain for some of our biggest battles, we'll end up being our biggest blessings. When you finally listen to me, I'm trying to help y'all. Because it took me a long time. I've not arrived, but I'm getting there. I'm getting stronger every day, every day of my life with Jesus Christ. I've not always preached like this. I used to think you had to get people excited and hoorah. It don't matter to me if you clap, sit down, stand up now. I'm going to preach Jesus because he's a life changer. He's a game changer. He works. But I'm telling y'all, listen to me. Some of you feel like your hips out of socket. Good. Good. Brian, I don't like preaching like this. You might as well. Because I'm telling you, if you've been with Jesus, sometimes your body's going to get down. Sometimes your hips going to hurt. Sometimes your toes is going to be sore. You leave church. Sometimes the people that you love the most will walk out on you the quickest. I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good. There there is purpose behind the pain. There's purpose behind it. So let me give you three lessons we can learn from Jacob's struggle with God. Can I do that real quick? Everybody say, not real quick. Everybody knows that. Three lessons we can learn from Jacob's struggle with God. Y'all ready? Because this will change your life. If you'll lean in and listen. Number one, we will all... Have painful encounters with the living God. I hear this all the time. If God loves me, how come this has happened to me? How do you think Jesus felt? 
his father, the man who loved him and still loves him, put his son on a cross, put nails in his hands, nails in his feet, put him in a borrowed tomb. And could you imagine, no wonder, no wonder Jesus said, my God, my God, if this cup can pass for me, please let it pass. My God, my God, why have you for us? See, Jesus went through everything that we go through, but I think he handled it different. He had purpose behind his pain. Mm. He had purpose behind the pain. If we as Americans that lives in Mayberry, if we could ever understand, I used to, I used to question God, God, why did I have to get up this morning and take a shot? God, why do I, have, why do I gotta eat certain things? I'm gonna tell y'all, if I, if I wasn't a diabetic, I would go to Krispy Kreme every day. I would weigh 455 pounds. So if I finally figured out, why, why could God, why did God do that? Here's why. He wanted me to stay sick. Well, little, I'm not skinny. Yeah, there is purpose behind everything in my life and in your life. Watch, I'm going to mess some of you religious folk up. I am a divorced man, but there was purpose behind it. See, y'all, y'all, y'all. See, you're in church. Why, why, why is it like that, Brian? It's called stinking life. We got to learn. Look, we got to learn that there is purpose behind the pain. There was purpose behind Jacob's hip being thrown out of socket. He didn't do it because he said, well, I'm just, I want my socket, my hip to be out of socket today. He didn't do that. Listen to me. Paul had a thorn in his side. Y'all remember that? But God said, my grace is sufficient. I'm trying to help y'all. Peter was crucified upside down. They didn't even put him right side up. They put him upside down and nailed him to a cross upside down. How many of y'all having a great day? <laughs> How many of y'all have, come on somebody. How many of y'all having a real good morning? Yeah. John, for standing up for Jesus Christ, was beheaded over a prostitute. Beheaded. Put his head, y'all watch me, it's in your Bibles. I know we've read it, but have you, have you allowed it to read you? They put his head on a platter. And took his head to the queen. And here's, here's what you wanted. And raised the lid up and there was John the Baptist's head. How many of y'all having a great day? Come on. What about Job? We use this all the time, but I believe what I'm preaching. Job lost ten children in one day. Come on, y'all. This is the truth. This is real. If it's not, let's go home. His house got burned. His livestock, dead, gone. Everything, children, gone. His wife looked at him and said, won't you just curse God and die? His three best friends looked at him and said, what in the world, Job, do you got going on in your life? He said, I love this. I love Job 19. He said, naked I came into the world and naked I'll leave the world. But blessed be the name of God. My Redeemer lives. He's alive. He's well. And I'm going to stand no matter if anybody else gets out. I'm standing where I'm at. Somebody give God praise. You got to believe what I'm preaching here today. It's going to happen. It's called life. People's going to walk out on you. But don't you walk out on God. That's a word from the Lord. People, family's going to hurt you. Church is going to hurt you. I know people here today that's got church hurt and they won't go to the hurt I'm telling you, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy. Look at me, it's easy. Why are we complicating this stuff? It's called forgiveness. I ain't going to them, they come to me. You're the problem. Uh-oh. Ooh, cold wave. Cold wave. I wrote this in my notes. Brokenness is saying I need God more than anything. Y'all know how much better I am today? Because of broken moments. Because of broken moments. Now at the time, I didn't like to be broke. Who does? Who likes to say, oh, God, break me, break me. Who does that? 
But here's what God spoke into my spirit, and I'm going to lay at your feet here today. And this is worth a shout right here. I wrote this. God is the master at taking broken people and putting them back together as his masterpiece. Come on. He is the master at taking broken people and putting them back to, I feel the Holy Ghost, and putting them back together and they become a masterpiece. I'm looking out here today, I see some broken pieces. I see some people that need some fixing. I serve a God that owns some Holy Ghost super glue. He'll put you back together. And watch this, he'll refurbish you. He'll get you stronger than you've ever been in your life. I'm telling y'all, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit. He'll do it. How come some people can take a licking and keep on ticking? How come some people can be on their deathbed? Y'all help me. Y'all want preaching? Y'all want vacation Bible school? How come they can be on their deathbed on their, in, their, in their last breath? And they'll look up and say, God, I commend my spirit under your spirit, God. Take me. There's something about that, Jimmy. Well, that ain't fake. Well, look, when it's dying time, that's the real you. When it's dying time, see, we can front, we can do what it is. You can be here, but you ain't, I don't mean you're here. But when it's dying time, I've seen it. I've seen some of the biggest boys, thought they were big, get on that deathbed. And all of a sudden, that big old boy comes a weeping child. Stay that way, Brendan. Yeah, stay that, yeah. Because I'm telling you, listen to me, this is real. That's why I'm so passionate about God. Because I, all my life, I looked around, and I'm like, God, where's your church at? Where's your church at? And I'm seeing it. And I believe we're closer to Jesus today than we was yesterday. And we better, I'm telling you, we better get on board. We better get on board. God is the master at taking broken, I can't get this out of my spirit, taking broken people, putting them all back together, and all of a sudden, the master makes a masterpiece. Whew. Whew. There's going to be hard days. Going to be crying days. We're going to face death. We're going to do it, guys. Don't let it shock you. But you know what this, number two, you know what the limp in, in Jacob's life taught me when I, after I was reading this and studying this? The second thing that God spoke into my heart. Y'all with me? Sound with you, Brian. I've only got one more point after this one. I'll let you go. Number two, limps are reminders. Whew. Limps are reminders from God. I was back there talking a while ago. I said, you know, I, I said, I don't, I don't like divorce. God, I hate divorce. God hates divorce. I, I, there's a lot of things in life that I, I just don't like. I don't agree with. But you know what? Every broken moment that I went through had purpose. And now, can y'all believe I'm, I'm y'all's pastor? That blows my mama's mind too. It blows my mind that God has given me a platform that I can minister his word. And I'm just here to tell y'all, listen to me, trying to help you. Everything you're going through has a purpose. You just got to look at it through the lenses of heaven, through the lenses of Calvary. And then when you start looking in, God, what's this going on in my life? I promise you, you'll have a hip moment. It's a reminder. And I know a lot of Christians here today, you walk with a spiritual limp. Hallelujah. You, you walk with a spiritual limp. And the other thing I wrote mine too, limping makes you desperate for your next step. Can you imagine after, after Jacob got his, his hip thrown out of socket? He went down on the ground. Some commentary says that Josephus says he went down on the ground. Can y'all imagine, listen to me, when that first step that he had to take after being dislocated, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, a lot of us are dislocated. God, watch. God will dislocate you. God, watch. God will do whatever it takes to win souls. Look at me. I, I believe in the sovereignty of God. Somebody say, I believe in that too. He's sovereign. He is God. He, everything has purpose. Watch, I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy, but you may not hear preaching like this. I got to tell you the truth. As bad as 9-11 was, souls got saved. I remember 
There was a person who walked into the office one time. Haywood Reiner was my associate at that time. And they walked in. They were going through a divorce. They were going through, they lost a child. God, there was so much going on. And Haywood said this. It, it, he don't even realize he said this at the time, how it spoke to me. He said these words. This is a man of wisdom. He said, you know, I've never had that to happen to me. But there's a man in the office right across from me. He's lost two kids. He's been divorced. And he, he's been healed. And he knows how to speak to you. Your brokenness is not for you. Your brokenness, your hurt, your pain. If you'll grow up spiritually and say, God, I know I'm walking different. God, I know there's something about my life, Lord. And I know I've got a hip problem in my life. And But God, I'm here for you. And God, put someone in my path. Put a beggar at the gate. God, put someone in my path that I can talk to and I can minister to. God, it's not about me no more. Can you imagine Jacob's first step after a dislocated hip? He didn't go to the hospital. Y'all think about this. See, we think that there was a Taylor County Regional Hospital in there in, in Israel. There wasn't Willie. Dad, think about this. He was down. But hallelujah, he got back up. And I'm looking at some people today. You've been down. You've been hurt. You've been broken. You've been crushed. And I can't imagine what that first step to victory is going to look like. But I say, thus saith the Lord. Get up, stand up, and take your first step. Do something for God. Take that step. And I say, hey. And I'm telling you, every step that you take, you'll get started healing. Yeah, I know some of you may still walk funny. It's like I tell people all the time about this scar. I got a scar playing football. Now, I wasn't a D9 dozer. I wasn't. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, I almost got a scholarship. I had, no. I was the person on the bench when we was losing bad. Rafferty, I need you to get in for 30 seconds. That was me. Now, I'm not going to lie about it. You hear everybody, I almost made it to the NFL. Oh, bull butter. Everybody was good, right? But anyway, I was a 30-second man. So I got out there for 30 seconds, and the man didn't have rubber around his helmet. His helmet went in my arm, had to have 33 stitches, cut me down to the bone. 30 seconds, it wasn't worth it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm with me. I promise you. So here's the deal. I'm, I'm cut. I, I, I know how I got this scar. But it don't hurt no more. I'm preaching better than y'all are acting. I know who I know who hit me. I, I know it hurt. I know I had to have stitches. I, I, I know I didn't get to finish the season. The culture center, I had to get him out one way or the other. I'm just joking. I remember the pain. Beth, but it, it don't hurt no more. 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 So listen, here's what I'm saying. Sometimes God has to dislocate some things. Sometimes he's got to get you in a, an uncomfortable situation to get your attention. Because some of you, I feel, this, I feel this in my bones right now. I feel a fire in my bones right now. Some of you, if you'll answer this question 100% truthfully, do you really need God? I, 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 I'm just going to listen. Do you really Need God. I'm, listen. I'm asking you. And I'm going to let this soak in. Do you really need God? Now we say yes. But we act different. Boy. Holy. All right. Now that's a church mouse can out shout you. Do you really need God? I'm, I'm going to stop there. And you all day today. All day. Just ask yourself. man. I, I'm doing things on my own. I, I'm telling y'all. What I see as a pastor in these last days. America. Be careful. Dr. Patrick Keyu says it like this. Kenya, Africa don't have anything. But they give God everything. America has everything and don't give God anything. 
Do we, do we really need God? I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to go to number three. <laughs> number three, number three. Y'all, y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Come on, say, I'm with you. If you're not walking different, there wasn't a true encounter with God. Oh, yeah. If you're, if, if you're not walking different, there wasn't a true encounter with God. Because listen, true encounters with God equal true change in your daily walk. Y'all, y'all understand this? Come on. Listen, I'm just telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name. After Jacob encountered God, watch this, he was never the same. And Jimmy, here's what I love about it. Everybody noticed that he was different. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. It's so true. Whether you're at work, whether you're at church, whether you're at school, which we know you're not there right now, or whether you're at the university, people should be able to look at your life and, make, and see a different kind of walk. A different kind of walk in your life. And I love this. Listen to me. The angel of the Lord said in Genesis 32, 26, I love this. The angel of the Lord said these words. Let me go for dawn is breaking. And I love what Jacob says. And we've done talked about this a little bit. Listen to me. He says this in return. I will not let you go unless you bless me. I'm talking to some people today, whether they're watching on Facebook or in-house. I'm telling you, you're, you're getting ready to quit. And I feel this in my spirit. This is not in my notes. This is God speaking to Rafferty and Rafferty speaking to all of us. Some of you are on the threshold of quitting. Some of you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and you've not seen anything happen in your life. But you've got to have a Jacob moment. Look at me. You've got to have a Jacob moment. You've got to be willing to get your hip thrown out of socket. Hmm. You've got to be willing to be drugged through the dirt. You've got to be willing to crawl on the ground just to touch the hem of his garment. You've got to be willing. There was, there was 12 in a boat and only one got out to walk on water. We got a lot of dry boat talkers, but I'm looking for some wet water walkers. I'm looking for some people today. I'm looking for some people today that says, you know what? I'm putting one foot over the boat. I'm putting the second foot over the boat, and I'm going to walk on water. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up until the Lord blesses me. Somebody say amen. No, somebody say amen. I'm telling you, I feel that in my spirit. I'm not letting go. And Lord, I'll make this a proclamation today. God, I'm not letting go of you till you bless me. Till you bless me. Anybody can quit. Very few people, very few people is going to cross the line. You can bank on that. You can bank on that. You can bank. Even those people who think they're truly saved. There's going to be a day in heaven. God's going to look over and he's going to say, hey, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But God, didn't we do this? Didn't I go to church in Elkhorn? Didn't I, well, now under Brother Brian's preaching. God, I, I tithed. I cast out devils. How many of y'all know the devil can cast out the devil? So here's what God spoke into me. Praise team, come. And I'm gonna, after I speak it, so you're going to be released. How many of you glad you came to church today? Amen. The rest of you, how many of you came to church today? I'm getting ready to lay something at your feet. I chewed on this. I chewed on this. I chewed on this. Because I, I, when I study the Bible, I want to chew on it. I don't want to stand up here and give you three little points and a benediction and nobody leave changed. That is not church. I'm telling you today, is you, can, you can leave change today. So the angel, I love this, said, okay. Listen to me, lean in. But before I bless you, what's your name? I'm going somewhere. What's your, everybody say, what's your name? The rest of them say, what's your name? I love this. So we know right here, God or an angel can speak. We realize this. God does not have spiritual laryngitis. Now, you may have cotton in your ears. But God speaks. God uses angels. God uses people. God uses worship. God uses everything. God uses the birds that flap their little wings in the air. 
God uses us. And watch this. When they're chirping, they're not chirping. They're giving him praise. I can prove that in the Bible too. They're giving him praise. So I love this. Y'all, y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. He said, my name's Jacob. <laughs> I love this. And the angel said, you want a blessing? How many of y'all want to be a blessing? How many of y'all want to be blessed? Watch this. He said this. The only way you can be blessed, I love this, is that you have to change your name. Woo! We miss this all the time. I personally believe, you should feel the Holy Ghost. After studying the Word of God, y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Because I'm getting ready to lay something at your feet and you got to chew on this, all right? I personally believe at this moment he got born again. So, y'all, look, please don't, just don't come to church. Please study God's word. Rightly dividing God's word. Rightly dividing it. I believe, Pastor Joey, at this moment, he encountered God. He had a life change. He went from Jacob to Israel. And what I'm saying today is this. Have you had your name changed? Because I love this, Joy. We miss it so often. The angel in one commentary said it was like this. It said, because God just wanted to use you for a new purpose. God just wanted to do new things in your life. And with the old name, hey, in the old situation, in the old things in your life, you, you can't be used no more. The old is gone. And behold, everything becomes new. Everything, 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 everything becomes new. Youth, has, has your name been changed? Because I love this, because if your name has been changed, you can't go back to the vomit. You, you cannot watch. I'm going to tell y'all. I'm not afraid to tell y'all no more. August the 8th of 2010. Over in that worship activity center. I can take you to the piece of tile. My life changed. Have I messed up? <laughs> y'all answer that one. Have, has B-Raph messed up? I'm going to answer. B-Raph, have they messed up? All the time. But I can't, I can't stay in the vomit. If I hurt somebody, I got to go to them. So, um, okay. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't want to do this. So, um, I got a bullseye on my back right now. And I know when I say this, the religious folk. Um, 20 years of my life went by. 20 years. Everybody say 20 years. And I forgot what I thought. I had forgiven my ex-wife. So one day I was going to go into a staff meeting. And my, my phone rang. And I answered it. And it was a young lady on the other end of the phone line. She says, it's Brian. And I said, uh, yes, and who is this? And she told me her name. And it was my ex-wife. I don't even know why. Maybe. God, what am I doing? 20 years went by. See, y'all don't understand the hurt that people have. That's why it's so important to get your name changed. And she said these words that changed my life. She called me. I didn't call her. She called me. And she said these words. She said, um, so Sunday I went to South Campbellsville Baptist Church. And she said, uh, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Yeah. She 
asked him why I was at the altar. She said, uh, God put your name on my heart. And she said, I know I've done you wrong 20 years later. And she said, I need to ask you to forgive me. And I'm not going to lie. I struggled with that for a moment. Because in my mind, I went back. You've done this. You've done that. You've done this. And you've done that. And the Lord spoke into my spirit and said, I love her as much as I love you. So, um. So I look at my life and I really probably, according to man, shouldn't be standing here today. I'm going somewhere. So for the first time in 20 years, I said these words. Y'all ready? You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. I'm looking at me. You are forgiven. Y'all look at me. You are forgiven. 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 I think a lot of times we forget where God's brought us from. And sometimes God's got to dislocate our hips. Sometimes God's got to get us on our knees. Sometimes God will allow a 9-11 in our life and a tragedy will come. And if you're not built on the firm foundation, the world will rock you. So then God told me to do something. He said, pray for her now. And I'm not going to lie. Y'all can look at me like, Brian, you're stupid. You're crazy. No, I'm telling y'all, this is how God works in my life. I don't know how he works in y'all's life. This is how he works in my life. Because I refuse to allow unforgiveness to send me to hell. You say, Brian, you're a southern man. I don't care about a denomination. I care about a denominator. So he said, pray for her. And I'm like, uh, uh uh-uh. And I know she probably thought, are you there? And it wasn't long. I just said, God, thank you for saving her. Thank you, God, that she's forgiven. Thank you, God, she's going to heaven. And God, I want to hear these words. You are forgiven. I've not talked to her since then. But it was a divine appointment. It was a divine appointment. So here's what I'm saying. If you don't walk different. You've not encountered him. Look at me. If you have feel the Holy Ghost. If you don't walk different. You've not encountered him. Brian they cussed me out. They cussed Jesus out. Brian, my family walked out on me. They threw Jesus out of Nazareth. They ain't nailed you to the cross yet. They ain't put you in a borrowed tomb yet. They ain't spit on you yet. They had cussed you like they cussed him that day. They even put it, mocked him, put a, a sin above his head. So here, I'm done. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Everybody stand. So your true identity, I'm, I'm, your true identity can only be found in your willingness to press into God. Did y'all hear me? You know when I find the true Brian? Y'all watch. It's not on this stage. Y'all look at me. The true Brian, I love God. I love you. But y'all know when I find who Brian Keith Rafferty truly is? In his presence. I'm talking Matthew chapter 6 where I go there and I shut the door and everything else is like fades. Y'all with me? Say I'm with you. So here's what, summing it up, after 35 minutes of a sermon, here's what Genesis 32 is really saying about when you encounter God. Y'all ready? If you have truly encountered God, I'm not saying, watch, 
I'm not saying you walk an aisle and nothing changes. No, no. I'm not talking about, man, that you, you get pulled over by the cops and you say, oh, I got convicted. No, you got scared. I'm talking about this. And here it will explain everything about you. About Matthew chapter 6, when you go into the closet, you shut the door. Who are you? Genesis 32 says these words. If you have truly encountered God, truly experienced God, three things are going to happen. Everybody say three things are going to happen. Everybody say three things are going to happen. Here it is. You'll get a new name. Number two, you'll get a new walk. And number three, you'll have a new relationship. Name, walk, and relationship. You'll get a new name. You'll get a new walk. And you'll get a new relationship. Got to. Got to. Here's what I'm saying. I'm done. That's the third time. Y'all know you're out. Here's my, here's my, for, 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 here's what I'm nervous about. When we stand before God, when, when you watch, when you stand before God, he asks, do I know you? He asked him, says, why, why do you want to know my name? There was a reason behind that. We miss it. He said, what's your name? <laughs> he said, I'm going to change your name. What was your name? He knew his, the only way, the only way that God rec- or that angel recognized him was by his new name. The only way. Are y'all good? This is so deep this morning. This is so deep this morning. so good. The only way when you get to heaven that God's going to notice you is by your new name. A new name is going to be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. A new walk. A new way. A new experience. A new relationship. It's got to be that way. So when you get God, God gets you. And I love this. I wrote this in my own notes. Jacob. <laughs> he said, the only reason I'm limping is because I ran into God. <laughs> I love that. I ran into God. And God ran into me. Y'all, wanna, y'all know what I'm praying today? I pray y'all have a head-on collision with God. A head-on collision with God. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray this prayer believing God that today you gave us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Lord, I pray for the youth. I pray for the adults. I pray from front to back, side to side, top to bottom. Lord, I pray today, God, plow this altar. God, bring people to the altar. God, bring your church back to the altar. God, may you, we get up and may we have a Holy Ghost limp. That people can look at our life and say, I know there's something different about them. They even walk different. So God, have your way. Bless these people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.